Okay. Welcome to Jews in Sports, presented by jifoundation.org and ish.com in support of the Climb for Life program, taking kids with physical challenges through a Spartan race. And I say it all the time, this program changes lives. The inspiration is out of, the, out of this world. So jifoundation.org, sign up as a volunteer, read our heroes' stories, leave a comment to motivate these kids. This program on H, this series video podcast, is in collaboration with the Climb for Life program to inspire our athletes. So if you have a guest uh, that you think should be on our show or you just want to watch past uh, podcasts, go to jifoundation.org slash podcast. I am your host, Michael Newman. I am an elite Spartan racer in the world of OCR sport. I have podiumed and been in championships. I was on LeBron James's show, Million Dollar Mile, where I won $25,000 in my Yamaka against a pro athlete where I got to, uh, I now get to speak around the country, started the JI Foundation, um, as well as I will be on a future sports competition show in the near future. Follow me on Instagram, The Jewish Athlete, but more importantly, jifoundation.org. This series, I say it all the time, is amazing. We take the perspective, the unique perspective of Jewish athletes, our heroes, where we get to tackle the biggest questions in, um, in our lives from the unique perspective. Athletes see failure differently. We push ourselves in sport. We have such a different concept when it comes to challenges and obstacles. So these are the guys we want to talk to about the biggest topics. Introducing a little drum roll, Ryan Terrell. Before I introduce you, we're gonna take a quick 60 second or short answer shot at our topic, and then we'll get into your story. And the topic is how to handle the pressure in big moments. Right. Um, you know, first of all, when, when you get in those situations, you, the way to cope with you got to understand is that you can't be afraid to miss the shot. You, you mm -hmm. can't make the, be afraid to make the wrong play. You have to have the confidence uh, to, to, in yourself and in your teammates to, to make the right play. Uh, basketball, the game of basketball, and I think in life is, is 90% confidence. If you're confident, you go in with, with, with that confidence, you, you should be able to, to, to achieve your goal uh, or, or win the game. But uh, a lot that goes into it is, is the work and the hours uh, that you put into it before. You know, I know when that, that shot comes or when that moment comes, I know that I've, I've worked hard for this moment. I've worked harder than the guys on the court next to me. So I'm not afraid to go out and take that shot. I'm not afraid to go out and try to make that play. So knowing that you have put in the hours and put in the work off the court uh, will make you able to hit that shot or make that play. And talking about fear is a, big, is a big factor to why it holds us back. And this isn't even in the game of basketball in life, right? Put in the work, and then once you're in the moment, take away the fear. So let's introduce, let's introduce you. We'll come back to the topic. And before, I, I, I'm going to do something, lay myself out on the line with the most corniest joke. But here it goes. Why was Cinderella thrown, out, thrown off the basketball team? Why? She ran away from the ball. <laughs> uh, oh, and the point, I, <laughs> the point I bring this, the reason why I bring this uh, joke up is because you were a part of an incredible Cinderella team. The Maccabees of Yeshiva, Yeshiva University uh, went 27 games in a row, won the Skyline uh, uh, Championship, got into the Division Three. Uh, division, division three NCAA tournament. You yourself, the accolades are ridiculous, uh, let alone just from this year. But the uh, crazy, the amazing Kiddush Hashem was you won the basketball player of the year from the Writers Metropolitan Basketball Writers Associate, Association uh, in Division three. And so, if I missed anything from that, but please tell us your story to basketball, your love for basketball. You know, you did such great things in this, uh, you know, in this year, but, and then, uh, and then we will also get into the topic of 
you guys stopped in the Sweet 16, I, I'm pretty sure. And then uh, because yeah. of COVID, because of COVID, you guys looked like you were going to the championship. COVID comes. And so we'll get also into, the, into that topic. But what, what's your story, where you grew up from, and, and your life into basketball? Yeah. Um, so I grew up in uh, Los Angeles, California. I'm from the Valley. I'm not a city boy. Um, but, uh, you know, I grew up loving basketball and playing basketball. You know, my, my father played Division One basketball at uh, UC Santa Barbara. Uh, he was all state in high school and he always used to, you know, play in the front yard with us, me and my older brother. And, um, you know, playing with my older brother and all of his older friends, you know, I, I started getting better and better just by playing the bigger, faster, stronger competition. And I just love the game from there. You know, the, the competition aspect, the, the life aspect of it, you know, you have to work as a team and you, you got to work, work together in order to, especially when I was smaller, you know, when I wasn't as big as these guys, you got to work together in order to beat the competition or be whoever you're playing. So I love that aspect of the game. And I, I, basketball is just like, a, is second to religion to me, you know, Fa or family, ba family, religion, basketball, religion, family, basketball, you know, it's third in my life. And uh, it's, it's a big influence in my life and a big impact in my life. And I, and I love the game, you know? So it's, uh, and I speak about it all the time, right? Religion first, basketball second, but you take the passion of, Hashem of religion into basketball, but now you have, tell us, walk us through the season of defying all the odds. Everyone, you know, again, you know, everyone seeing, you know, yarmulkes run around the court, having this crazy streak, getting in the media. What was the mindset of the team through the winning streak? And then when you got into division, into the NCAA tournament, and I'm right. curious also, did you guys like have the concept that no doubt you were going to win? Right. So I'm going to take this back to um, when uh, Coach Simons was recruiting me. Um, back in my sophomore year of high school at the Sarachek tournament, we, we, we sat down on a Shabbos and we had a conversation on, you know, what his future, what he sees in the future, what he thinks he could do with the guys he's getting. He was telling me about Simcha Halpert, Donnie Katz, Gabe Leifer, you know, all these guys that, you know, I've heard of them, but I'm like, okay, you know, Gabe was great in high school, but the other two were very good players, but he had a vision that with this team, and if I add on to this team by this year, we can, we can do something special. So we came into the year. I, so I skipped a year in Israel. I didn't go. I went straight from high school to, um, to uh, Yeshiva University because I knew that it would take a year for that our team, those – four or five guys to really mesh and gel and get that team chemistry that you need, you know, to be successful. So by the next year, I knew, we all knew like, this is the year, this is the whole, this is what we, this is what it's for. This is our vision from five years before this team right here has to be the team that's special. This team has to be the team that, that makes it far and, and, and defies the quote unquote, odds of, of Jewish basketball or, you know, Jews in general, Jewish athletes, you know, the, um, five years in the making, five years in the making. But, um, so the way we looked at every game is from the year before we learned, we, we went on a 17 game winning streak the year before, and then we ended up having a couple tough losses at the end of the year, lost our conference championship. And I think part of the reason why we did that is because we were like, okay, we're, we're going to make the tournament this year. You right. know, we're going to, we're going to be great this year. We went 17 in a row. We're on a roll right now. You know, we're getting gel. We got gel and we didn't focus on the game on the specific game that night or that day. And uh, it caused us to lose a couple big games. And so we came into the next year going, Hey, doesn't matter who we're playing. We're playing college basketball players, and we need to focus on every single night like it's our last game, like it's our championship, and not look forward. We got to stay in the moment and really focus on each each team because in, in in college sports anywhere, if you take someone for granted, they're going to beat you. There's a reason why they're there. You People know? are competitive in sports, and they People see that angle, they're gonna take it. 
absolutely no one likes losing you know <laughs> so we had to we had to make a mindset of we're, we're we're focusing on each game um specifically so that mindset and that attitude caused us to go on this big 29 game winning streak run and 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 get past the championship and and go into the tournament and the tournament ha the two tournament games that we won happened to be our best games together you know we we felt like we gelled and had chemistry even better than we ever had which was amazing you know? In the biggest pre in the in the most pressured moments, you guys even gelled more, took the Absolutely. pressure off, and did even better. And I think part Same. of the reason of that is the, the team leadership of Donnie, Simka, mm -hmm. and Gabe were they were great leaders. And but they, we knew we all knew that we had each other's backs through the thick and thin. You know, if it, if it was tough, if if someone wasn't having a good night, well, we doesn't matter. We're going to get you through it. And we knew that we had each other's back. So it doesn't matter who scored the ball. We were happy for you. And, you know, nobody wanted to get the individual player of the game. It didn't matter. We, we had one goal in mind, which was winning. And that was the beauty of the team. And it's such an important thing in sports, right? When you come together as a team and you're able to be there for each other, right? It's not about my accolades. It's about all of us. And when you have Absolutely. that perspective, you can do way better than if it was just about yourself. Yeah, a hundred percent. And now, so you guys, you guys do those two games. You grow together, and now we talk about the leadership coming in to steady the ship of what you're probably still going through. COVID hits. You guys definitely were on a roll, doing well. Talk us through what, uh, what you know, the challenges of being able to now. You're still in, you guys got to bounce back for next year. You got to deal with the, the, the feeling. And a lot of people would say, oh my gosh, we failed. We didn't get there. The, the dread, the gut wrench, gut check punch. How do you guys overcome? Yeah. Um, you know, going into after our two, two tournament games, you know, we, we were the team that we were the test team that played with teams that, that played with no fans, which was a very interesting experience. Mm. How, how is that before we get to, how, what was that experience like? I personally liked it a lot. You know, I, I, it was, it was, there was no distractions. It was just basketball. It felt nice. like a pickup game, you know, and it was, it was awesome. It was an awesome feeling, but um, you know, so, but I, I had a conversation with my dad a couple nights before uh, we drove up to Virginia. I was very nervous that they were going to cancel the tournament. And he's mm -hmm. like, regardless if they do it, you have to be ready. You have to have a mindset of they're going to do it or we're going to play these games somehow and you have to be prepared. So I came into it prepared, but driving up, we drove up to Virginia and when we got there, uh, that's when they told us, yeah, the tournament got canceled and uh, we're not going to play. What was so, the feeling? What was the reactions? What did everyone say to each other? Yeah. So I felt bad, really bad for the seniors on the team. Mm. that You know, they played their last college basketball game. And they didn't know. You know, right. and, you know, the, the, the feeling is, you know, there's 16 other teams that are in the tournament saying this is our year that we could have won the national championship. And the fact that we couldn't play it out is, is heartbreaking. You know, there's, there wasn't the, the, the sweetness of victory. There wasn't the bitterness of defeat. It was just that the story just ended without an ending. And it was, the, the screen just turned black. Like it, it's over, <laughs> you know, but, um, we we were we were pretty upset about it and but we under we understood you got to keep the fans and people safe and the players safe and we understand the decision making uh of it but um we I, yeah well i we say i just, together. We, we just continue sorry are we, we oh there we go um, you know, we, me and the returning guy, me, Gabe, and the returning guys just said to each other, hey, you know, we didn't win it this year. You know, they, we, got, we felt like we got robbed this year because of this whole thing. And uh, we just got to use it as motivation. We, gotta, we got tough guys, a bunch of guys coming back, and we got to use it as fuel and get ready for the, for the national championship run we want to make next year. And that's also – and that's the point, right, in a sense of – we put, you know, we put the pressure on ourselves. We put the ideology of failure on ourselves. So how you decide to take it, like, you know, it's very tough or whatnot, but now we have to get ready for next year. 
is very much answers the pressure moments, the big shots, because you have to look back on this feeling or whatever it is. And in the next big moment, you know, you realize you can have the greater perspective. So to, to get back into, if you would have the, you know, the big shots in games, big shots in life, the pressure of those moments, what advice would you give for a kid? And I actually had this at a, ta- at a Shabbos table and I asked all the kids and, and adults, would you want the last shot of a basketball game? And all the kids said no. What advice would you give to tell that kid that they should or shouldn't shoot that basketball shot? I, th- I would always want to, I, me personally, I, I would always want to take that last shot, but you got to understand that, you know, the, the game rides on your shoulders, you know, you, you know, you right. got to understand if you miss it, it's on, you feel like it's on you. And uh, so it takes a lot of courage to take that shot, but I advise them to, to take that shot and be brave. And the braver you are, the more confident you are, you're going to make the shot and you just have the mindset, I'm going to make the shot, you know, or I'm going to make the right play. To add on that, I very much feel that it's not really about that moment. I feel that it's about the next moment. If you don't have that experience of the last shot, if you don't have, you know, I lost, I had four, uh, five fourth place finishes in Spartan before I was able to get my first win. Absolutely. Because if you don't give it your all, you don't take the last shot, you don't push at the end to try to get third place and in our heads we fail, you know, you're never going to, in the next big moment, you're never going to be able to take a deep breath and hit the shot. Absolutely. I've missed the game winners in my career plenty of times. You know, I've missed my fair share of them. You know, a a game icing bucket, you know, Mm. in in big stages. I I felt that that pain of I missed it. I lost the game, you know, but you just got to use it as as it's, it's a lesson learned. What did I do wrong on that shot? What did I do wrong on this play? You're going to have many plays after that, and you, you're going to have that situation again. you got to understand that. And from those shots that you missed before, you know what you did wrong, and you can learn from what you did wrong, and you can make the correction and, and, and end up hitting the shot, you know, and becoming a, a quote-unquote hero for hitting that shot. And no one remembers the shot that you missed. Wipe, wipe it away, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's like with success, right? I mean, we, we, we get down on ourselves more, so much more in life, and no one cares. No one's looking right. at us. <laughs> you know? not. Right, exactly. And I think you pointed something out pretty cool with the no fans, right? right. Now it's just basketball, right? I think you're pointing out in a sense of you take – and a lot of athletes around the country were saying, oh, my gosh, we can't play without fans. We can't play – and I kind of was saying, like, that, that's, that's not what you're doing right now. You're right. playing a sport. You're playing a craft. And to your point, you take away the pressure or whatever, and you get to just experience the game without saying, oh, my God, this person's looking. Right. It no, could work absolutely. both ways. It could, oh, work, it could both work both ways. ways. You know, if you have a home court advantage, it's, it works against you, per se. But personally, I, I loved it. You know, I played pickup ball as much as I can during the summer, you know, every chance I get during the off season, I'm on the pickup court playing, you know, trying to get the, trying to find the best competition. So the fact that there was no fans just felt like a pickup game with refs and coaches, but the, but it, it just, it felt, it felt just like basketball. And I think that's part of the reason why we were so successful in those games. And any, any uh, through, you know, the Kiddush Hashem you made, but any experience with Judaism, how other people saw you, um, you know, underestimating you or anything like that, in, you know, with Yeshiva University Basketball? No, uh, I, yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, people, when you walk onto a pickup court with the yarmulke on or when you want, I'm sh- sure, like, when they see you with the yarmulke on, you know, in your competitions, they're like, okay, you know, that's, that guy's coming in last, you know, that guy isn't all the time. I've, right. People, people have told me, they said, I didn't expect for you to do that. Like, right. oh, right. yeah, absolutely. You know, <laughs> and they, it's the same thing in basketball. It's the same thing in life. People are going to to doubt you and you just got to use that as motivation to beat them. You know, that you got to, that's an advantage. If they're underestimating you, okay, yes. I'm now going to beat you. And then you're never going to underestimate me, 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 estimate me again. Sorry. Yeah. No. And, and I think, People need to not buy in. I think an issue that we all go through is we buy in to their estimation. Right. 
we say, right. oh, Jews aren't supposed to be athletes. So then we tell ourselves that. Right. And we settle for mediocrity in, exactly. the, in, the, athletic, uh, in the athletic field. And, and you know, I, I hope to, that to uh, you know, kind of kill that stereotype. I hope that, we, you know, I know you do too, you know. No, to, but, you, but you did, and that's the point, right? right. It, as someone just said to me recently, like, for Jews, it's just making it to the elite level. And that's, that's an insult to right. Jews in the sense of, oh, just because we make it? No, it's time to, we're in a different day and age. It's time to get it done. And right. you guys were on your way. Uh, another huge obstacle was thrown in your way. Hashem runs the world. Whatever, you know, uh, I don't know if you say Gams Latova in that moment or you look at the bigger picture. But again, um, you guys have to pivot, pivot, pivot and do that. Uh, where does Hashem come where does your relationship with Hashem Judaism play in basketball in your life? Oh, oh a huge part, a huge part. I, when I was in high school, my senior or my junior year, going into my senior year, I was I was getting recruited. I had a couple, a few D one offers, and you know I was thinking about taking uh, a few of them up. And um, when I started making my decision and started really thinking about it, I was kind of you know, I was stuck, you know, I was like, what am I doing? Hmm. You, I, I, I've, I've dedicated all my life. I've gone to Jewish schools. I've gone to Shul on Shabbos. I've kept Shabbos. I've kept kosher. I've done all these things. Am I really willing to throw all of this away just to say, Hey, I played division one basketball. Hey, hmm. I played basketball at a high level. Right. Am I really, and I wasn't willing to do that. And I decided that Let's go make, you know, with the guys that were at Yeshiva University, that's the best of both worlds of high competition basketball and, and religiousness. And let's go, let's go make that high competition basketball. Let's go make a statement. Hey, we're Jews, but we're here. We're, we're going to go win a national championship. We're going to go deep in the tournament. You know, let's, let's set that, send that message and send the message to the guys who are getting you know, recruited to, to D1 schools or will have that mindset, oh, I have to go D1, I have to go to a higher level than that, that you don't have to do that. You don't have to sacrifice religion to, to, to play a certain sport. And you want to know something easier said than done because we're in a day and age where it's all about accolades and what people think of us and to sit there with very tasty offers and say, wait, what am I about? Who, who, you know, this isn't just about basketball. This is about our, my morals, life, Hashem, my mission. And I'll, I'll just quickly say a story, uh, Holocaust survivor, uh, you know, and I said to him, how did you become, come back to Judaism? Because he was so angry at God after the Holocaust. And he said it was such ferocity. And he said, you know, he just sat down one day. He said, you know, I have kids. What am I going to do? Am I going to you know, continue to be upset at God, or am I going to, you know, in his point, it was a very simple decision to him, but most people don't make it. And so right. for you to sit there and say, this is more important for me is courageous. Right. I appreciate it. Thanks. So we're going to end here. Ryan Terrell, you are absolutely an inspiration for our kids at Climb for Life, who are going to go on the biggest journey of their life. You have taken the biggest journey and the challenges and turn them into a positive where everyone gets to see why you basketball shine with Jews, breaking stereotypes. Thank you so much for your time. And thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. This was awesome and a lot of fun. And thank you. Continue to inspire. <laughs> All right. You <Okay>. too. <laughs>